my channel. If you are new here, my name's Chantel, and today I'm going to go through Amazon's Kindles. So today I'm gonna give you a rundown on why I use a Kindle in the first place, why I absolutely love mine, which one I personally use out of the lineup, and which ones I would recommend, whether you are just starting out with e-reading or if you are a seasoned e-reader and you're thinking about upgrading one of your current devices to one of these Kindles. I'm gonna go through the three Kindles that are in the current lineup. They do come in a couple of different variations, but these are like your three primary Kindles because these really are in quite a range of prices here. Right off the bat, I am a huge Kindle lover, so if you are considering buying a Kindle, I would go ahead and say, don't hesitate, absolutely grab one. This is one of the best things I have ever bought myself. I would consider it tech, right? So I would honestly say this is one of the best devices I've ever bought, and that's saying a lot because I do have a lot of tech, but my Kindle is one of those devices that really has the opportunity to be really life-changing. I read way more books now than I ever have before, and beyond that, the Kindle makes it so easy and convenient to read. It really removes all the excuses that you might have to not read. It removes any of that kind of resistance or inconvenience that stops you from picking up a book versus doing something else. And I have found that I have been able to kind of like habit replace a lot of my bad habits with reading because I have a Kindle. To me, it's worth it and any of them I think it is worth it because reading more books is such a good thing and can be can add so much value to your life overall. You might be asking what makes a Kindle special and I'm definitely here to tell you I love the Kindle book selection. I have never been able to not find a book to rent or buy from a Kindle and I did say rent because although there are things like Kindle Unlimited, I think there's like prime reading and stuff that you can use as well, you can actually get library books downloaded to your Kindle, which is amazing. And as much as I had like these delusions that I was going to actually physically go to the public library, I almost never did <laughs> over my adult life so I use the library all the time now and I can read books for free. Of course for some popular titles you might have to wait a few weeks for your book to become available but that's not unlike the traditional library and it is so easy to use the library books. On Kindle all you have to do is get a library card which you can do online for most places now and then use the Libby app and that allows you to place holds on digital books and get copies of them and send them to your Kindle devices. So that is a really cool thing. And honestly, for that reason alone is a big reason why I use a Kindle. But beyond that, I've actually grown to really, really enjoy the Kindle reading experience. And I would even go so far as to say I now prefer it to a paperback or a hardback book. Just so insane to say, because I 100% was one of those people that said like, you know, I love the smell of books and I love the feel of books and I still do, but I'm able to read so many more books using Kindle. So that's kind of, it's kind of what I do now. And I will mention that you can use the Kindle app on your phone or your iPad and that's a great way to get started with e-reading. It's actually what I did as well, but I have found that I really enjoy using a Kindle for another particular reason and that is because this is not a multi-purpose device. Really the only thing this is useful for is reading. You're not gonna get any notifications on this device, so you're never going to be distracted well, you might get distracted from your reading from other reasons, but whenever I used to read on my phone or my iPad, I would almost always end up down like some social media rabbit hole or checking my emails or doing work or something. And when I'm using my Kindle, I am really, I can really just get lost in the book because it is a solo purpose device, which I absolutely love. You can download books directly from the Kindle device with Wi-Fi and you can read outside of Wi-Fi. So once you have a book downloaded on here, you don't actually have to have the Wi-Fi on. You could be really anywhere and continue to read your book. The Kindle devices are all small and light, so these are really easy to travel with, to carry around with you. I almost never go anywhere without my Kindle because it's so easy to bring. The battery life lasts forever. I really enjoy the e-ink display. It is super easy on the eyes. You can read at night with the lights off because they all have this brightness control and a backlight, which is very nice. And I mostly read in the evening. 
The other thing I really like about the Kindle is it has a lot of settings on here that um, I find really motivating while I'm reading. So you can turn on your reading progress and your Kindle actually learns your reading pace. So you can see how long it's gonna take you to finish a book or to finish a chapter. And I find that really helpful, especially while I am you know, in bed and I'm get, like really wrapped up in a book and I wanna remind myself that I should probably stop and go to sleep or it, in, it encourages me to keep going when I only have like a couple minutes left in a chapter. So I find that to be really useful. I also really love that Kindle syncs to Goodreads. Goodreads is this really awesome, I guess like social media platform for books and you can follow all of your friends and see kind of what they're reading and it's a fun place to mark books that you've read. You can keep track of your ratings. The other cool thing about Kindle is that you can highlight right in your Kindle and make notes and annotations in your Kindle and all of those will save to your Goodreads account, whether or not you have bought and owned the book or you are reading a library book, which I think is really, really nice. And then you can even sync all of those highlights to another app called Readwise, which I really enjoy. And it kind of cycles through your, your highlights and brings them up for you so you can see them over and over again, which is really nice, especially if you read a lot of nonfiction, which I try to for sure. And you highlight things, a lot of the times you forget them. If you use something like that, you're able to go back through those important points that you found in your books and you're able to turn more of your reading into actions in your life, which I think is super cool. Another thing I really like about the Kindle is that you are able to read as much as you want without having to physically store books. So as much as I like to buy books, I really don't like to store books, especially I don't like to store books that I didn't particularly like and I'm probably not gonna reread. And of course you don't know whether you're going to love a book or want to reread it before you've actually read it. So I used to hate buying physical books and then having them around when they weren't an accurate representation of my taste. They were just a book I bought and read. And so now I can read and buy books that I want without having to worry about storing it anywhere, which is nice. And I can choose to buy the physical copies of books that I know that I love and um, that I'm likely to reread or want to lend out to friends and things. I also really enjoy that you can adjust the font and the size of the font on all of these Kindles, which is great. I find that I kind of pump up the font size of my books when I'm reading late into the night. Um, I go like full grandma mode, but. I really like having the option to do that. And that being said, every single Kindle perk that I just mentioned is available on all three of these devices. And that brings me to my first recommendation. I think for the vast majority of people, the Kindle Basic is the way to go. This is the first Kindle I bought. This is the Kindle I've been using for the last two years and I have never ever had a single issue with it. It is still good to go. I'm really only upgrading for fun, <laughs> it's definitely not necessary. Everything that you need in a Kindle is in the Kindle Basic. This is what I recommend. This Kindle is $89.99. You can often get these on sale as well. And it was the best $89.99 I've ever spent in my life. A couple other things I love about the Basic Kindle is that it comes in color options. So it comes in a white and a black. I prefer the white Kindle here. I actually think it is the cutest. Kindle in the whole lineup. If you're curious, the case that I have on here is also made by Amazon and it is only available for the Kindle Basic. This is the sandstone case and it's got this kind of linen texture you can see. Um, and then the, the little edges are white so it matches your Kindle perfectly. I wish they made this in the other sizes for the Oasis and the Paperwhite, but they don't. So anyways, if you get a Kindle and you're not sure which Kindle to get, I highly recommend the Kindle Basic. There are a couple drawbacks to the Basic Kindle. It's not waterproof. It has a lower quality screen than the other models that we're gonna talk about. But to be honest with you, if you've never used a Kindle before, you're not gonna notice any of these issues. Um, I still have a hard time noticing any of the issues with the Kindle Basic. So this is the one that I recommend. That being said, if you have another 50 bucks, the Kindle Paperwhite 
definitely has its advantages. This is actually the most recently updated Kindle in the entire lineup. So there are a lot of benefits to this Kindle that aren't even in the more expensive Oasis model. And we'll go through that now. So if you are looking for those more modern updated features, this is definitely the one to go for. As you can see, the Kindle Paperwhite has this kind of flush screen with the bezels, whereas the Kindle Basic has a more raised edge here. So this one looks a lot more modern. It's got more LEDs so you can change kind of the light and the brightness. It's got a feature that you can actually change the temperature of the lighting. So you can choose to have a warmer display, which is helpful for the evening. So I've been told it's supposed to be even easier on your eyes and you get less blue light exposure that way. Now I'm not really sure how true that is or how beneficial it has been, but I have enjoyed using the warm screen. So this is the only Kindle with a USB-C charging port. The other ones have micro USB charging ports. So I always have USB-C chargers around. So this is super convenient, especially like if you think about going on a vacation or you're going on a work trip, you only have to bring like one cord. You don't have to pack an extra micro USB cord for your e-reader. So that is nice for sure. And although this is like a more modern updated design, there are a couple of things that are like a little bit inconvenient. Again, none of these are really big deals by any stretch of the imagination, but now that they've updated the screen to not have raised bezels, the bezels are also pretty thin. And although it looks really nice and modern, it's actually kind of hard to get a grip on the edge of the screen. So you can really only hold your Kindle one way. This is how I end up holding it most of the time, like or on the bottom because the bezels are so thin. And again, this isn't a really huge issue, especially if you're a casual reader, but if you're reading for hours, you'll notice it gets a little bit uncomfortable and you might accidentally tap to turn the page when you didn't mean to. The other thing that's a little bit annoying is that the on off button is at the bottom of this one. It's also at the bottom of the basic one. So occasionally I will slip while I'm holding my Kindle this way and I'll turn it off, which is annoying <laughs> while I'm reading, especially if I'm reading a really good book. So those are just a couple of things to keep in mind. But beyond that, this is great. Probably the most important thing about the Paperwhite that I like and something to keep in mind is again, this is the most recently upgraded form of the Kindle. The other Kindles I believe are a few years old in design. So this is the most future proofed device if that matters to you. It actually already had an update come out that is only available on the Paperwhite. It's just a page animation update, but it was only rolled out on the Paperwhite. It didn't even come out on the more expensive Oasis. So if that's any indication of how they're going to update the software, this is probably the one that's going to be the most relevant for the longest. So if that is important to you and for good reason, this is definitely the one to go for. The Kindle Paperwhite also has the most long lasting battery, which is really convenient in an e-reader. This is the most popular, like the most best selling e-reader on the market in general. Tons and tons of people have the Paperwhite, so you are bound to have support for this for years to come. It's definitely a good choice. And although the Paperwhite is objectively a really, really great choice, and I would recommend it willingly to anybody who was interested in it, it's actually not the device that I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna return that. And the one that I'm going to keep personally is the Oasis. And as much as I love the Oasis, I, I don't recommend it. I'm keeping it and I'm keeping it knowing it's kind of a dumb purchase. $249.99 and that's the starting point of this product. It is absolutely not worth it. It does not have enough benefits to be worth the price point in a large way is because it is not updated the way that the Paperwhite is and it's not getting all the updates the Paperwhite is getting. And that's annoying considering this is like over $100 more. So I hope that the Kindle Oasis comes out with a new model. That's what I'm hoping for. And if it does, and it has the features that I'm gonna talk about in a minute, I will totally buy that too. But I don't think this is worth it for the price point. I would definitely consider looking at some of the other ones. But if you wanna know why I enjoy the Oasis personally, I can totally tell you. It has all of those features from the Paperwhite. So it's got the lights. It's actually got more LEDs in here so you can control the light and the temperature even better on this one. It is 
um, higher quality build here so and that's probably where a lot of the price comes from the other two Kindles are basically completely plastic but the Oasis is this aluminum back here and it's got a glass front the quality of this device is better than the other ones really not worth it still but just thought I would mention it it also comes in two colors I have the champagne here and I really like how it looks it also comes in a silver so whichever one you prefer but to be honest with you the reason I like this Kindle so much the reason I'm choosing to spend too much on it is because I love the ergonomic design it has this ledge which is so easy to grab a hold of I can use this basically in any position I can always grab a hold of it some way because of this little ledge here and I love that it has these little page turning buttons so the top one moves you forward in your book and the back and the bottom one moves you back in your book and the other cool thing about this particular model is that it auto rotates so if you're right-handed or left-handed you'll be able to use your Kindle and you can switch hands while you're using it and the Kindle will auto rotate the buttons will move so it's still like you're still always moving clicking on the top button to move forward and the bottom button to move back no matter what hand you're in so this is great for left-handed people but to be honest i use it all the time too if you're reading for a long time especially like me and you read while laying in bed you might notice that you roll over and then you have to find another way to hold onto your kindle while still tapping right to move it forward and while using the kindle oasis this is a one-handed device because it has the buttons which i love and that is really why i'm keeping it it also has this kind of um, asymmetrical design here this little ledge and it's on the side of your little ledge here so this is super easy to hold i really enjoy the ergonomics i really hope they come out with an updated version of this because it still has the micro USB, which is annoying. The battery life is not as good as the paper white. And to be honest, what annoys me the most is that it didn't get the page animation update that the paper white did. And that just indicates to me that the paper white is the way of the future and the Oasis is kind of showing its age, which is annoying. The other thing I like about the Oasis is that it has its button up on the top instead of at the bottom of the device. So I almost never, in fact, I have never accidentally turned my Oasis off. So that is something to keep in mind. <laughs> Anyways, to reiterate, although I'm keeping this one, I do not think it's worth the price. The one I would recommend to the vast majority of people is the Kindle Basic. And if you have another 50 bucks, um, the Paperwhite is the most future-proofed option in the entire lineup. Anyways, those are the Kindles in the lineup. To be honest with you, I think any Kindle that you choose is going to be a value add in your life. It certainly has been for me. I could never live without a Kindle now that I've had it. I really, really enjoy it. If you are thinking about getting a Kindle, definitely get one. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps out this small channel. If you wanna see more Kindle things, some more Kindle tips and tricks, let me know down below. And also, let me know what what your favorite book is. I am always looking for new book recommendations. And now that I have a Kindle, I like run through books so quick. So thank you again so much for watching and I'll catch you next time. Bye.